This is an example application uh, on dynamic simulation using water resource management. Okay, so water resources are a big deal and they're gonna become even a bigger deal uh, as uh, populations grow. Uh, there is climate change um, and other factors that, uh, that come into uh, using water. And uh, so it, just looking at Utah, um, this is uh, BYU here. Um, down in Provo, and we get uh, water from a number of reservoirs. Uh, first of all, the snowpack runs off and runs into the Jordanelle or into the uh, Deer Creek Reservoir, and you can see uh, the rivers that then flow down into successively uh, uh, these, these successive bodies of water, Utah Lake, and then uh, Jordan River flowing into the Great Salt Lake. Okay, so this is just a simplified schematic of this. Okay, so we're going to say that we have inlet coming into the Jordanelle and then uh, transferred by the Provo River down to the Deer Creek Reservoir uh, to Utah Lake and then the Great Salt Lake. So we want to develop some dynamic, um, a dynamic model for this. And let's just use a very simplified dynamic model. Let's just use a mass balance. Uh, so I'm going to have the accumulation, the, the mass change with time is going to be equal to the mass flow rate in minus the mass flow rate out. Now mass is going to be equal to density times the volume and uh, the mass flow rate is also going to be equal to density times the volumetric flow rate. So if we assume a constant density for uh, our liquid, which is going to be water in this case, then this um, reduces down to something that looks more like a volume balance. Uh, but we need to start with the mass balance first, assume constant density to then get um, this correlation. Okay, so we're going to have the accumulation in volume is going to be whatever is coming in minus whatever is going out. We may have multiple inlets. So I'm going to say I equals 1 to number of inlets and uh, I equals 1 to number of outlets. Okay, so if we think about what changes the... Um, you know, what changes the volume of a reservoir? Uh, there are a number of things. There's evaporation. Okay, so that's going to be uh, kind of proportional to the surface area. Um, and uh, we also have um, uh, uh, outflows. Okay, so we manage these levels uh, for agriculture, for uh, city water use and other, uh, and also to maintain uh, flow rates in the rivers for fish and other uh, concerns. We also have, um, you know, uh, inlet flows. Okay. Now that's going to be from runoff uh, from a reservoir that's, uh, you know, that's having water flow through from a, a river or its outlet into another reservoir. So we have a couple different inlets as well. What we want to do is predict over the course of one year. Okay. We're going to predict over the course of one year. Uh, the height on each of these reservoirs. And uh, let's just have a simplified correlation for uh, the outlet flow that uh, we are going to be proportional. So this is going to be proportional to the square root of the height. So let's say it's not actively managed. It's just there's going to be a pipe at the bottom of the reservoir um, that uh, as the height increases, the um, I'll just put a constant there. Um, as the height increases, the outlet flow will increase according to the square root of the height of that reservoir. Okay, so let's um, let's go ahead and just uh, develop the simulation for this. I'm going to use um, MATLAB and Python for this simulation, and uh, you can also follow along if you want to grab um, some of the files for this. Okay, if you just go to the uh, the course website. And that's at uh, apmonitor.com and uh, slash do for dynamic optimization. And in this case, we're going to be following along on, um, if you want to grab the files for this, if you go under formulation here on the right, and then if you scroll down to the very bottom, okay, you're going to see uh, this exercise. Now, SMA time is about two hours for this, but you can see some links here on the different reservoirs, um, Deer Creek, uh, for example, and on their size and area and things like that, they'll need to go into this uh, model. 
Now you also have, uh, just summarized here, now, now this isn't uh, totally accurate, but uh, just for the purposes of simulation, we have um, some numbers here in terms of uh, kilometers. Uh, squared for area, kilometers cubed for volumes, and then meters for uh, heights. Okay, so there's just some initial data, initial conditions, and we want to simulate this throughout the year. Uh, we're going to assume a more runoff during the spring. Okay, so here's the uh, the runoff numbers um, that uh, you know higher, uh, 0.21 April to June, and for the rest of the year, 0.13. Okay, so let's go ahead and just build this model. Um, I'm going to open up uh, Notepad++, okay, and uh, let's just build this model. I'm going to start off with just some constants. Um, and so we have some outflow constants. Uh, first of all, bring up this web page as well, just so we can see some of these uh, values. Um, and let me make that just a little bit smaller. Okay, so we have some outflow constants that uh, we want, first of all, um, and uh, you can define these as uh, just numbers or uh, functions of prior numbers that I've declared. Okay, so um, there are C1, 2, and 3, and then 4 as well. And then let's get the uh, usage amounts. Okay, so that's the usage requirements. Um, I just labeled 1 for Jordanell, 2 for Deer Creek, three for Utah Lake and four for Great Salt Lake, um, just to vectorize it so we can uh, be a little bit more efficient. Okay, so here's some evaporation constants uh, for fresh water and then also for salt water. Okay, a little bit less evaporation uh, per area for salt water. And then we also have the surface areas for these lakes. Now you can see that the reservoirs um, are much smaller, but they're a lot deeper. Um, and uh, Utah Lake is much larger and Great Salt Lake, of course, is is very large. Okay, and then snowpack runoff. Um, we're going to feed this in through a data file, but this will be uh, the volumetric flow rate in uh, coming into the Jordanelle or the first reservoir. Okay, and then some variables as well. Okay, so initial volumes. Uh, these are just taken from uh, internet sources in terms of how many kilometers cubed are held in each of these reservoirs. So Utah Lake is very shallow but very large. Um, but the uh, reservoirs Jordanelle and Deer Creek are not quite as large as uh, Utah Lake, but they're much, much deeper. Okay, and, um, and the initial heights as well. Now, we have the, the surface areas and the volumes. We're just going to assume that, um, you know, the surface area stays constant uh, even as the height uh, changes. Uh, you know, as a simplifying assumption. Um, but uh, we're just going to uh, report these in meters. Okay, so to get the initial conditions for these, we can either initialize them at, at some value, and it'll calculate them, but uh, I'm just going to feed in the uh, calculated initial heights. Now, one thing you notice here is that I did 1 to 4. Okay, so I just vectorize this. So this is equivalent to me writing H1 equals 1,000 times V1 divided by A1 and then H2 equals 1,000 times V2 t divided by A2, and so on. Or I could write that with one statement there. Okay, there are my outlet um, flow rates as well. I've just initialized those, those outlet flow rates. Okay, and then I have some intermediates as well. Now, intermediates are um, equations that um, I'm, I'm going to evaluate every residual call uh, when, I'm, when I'm trying to optimize but they're explicitly defined. Okay, so I'm going to um, just substitute these into my equations later. And, and a lot of times they're just very simple correlations. In this case, the uh, volumetric flow rate in of the following reservoir is going to be equal to the volumetric flow rate out of the preceding reservoir. Okay, so I did um, V in two, for example, is equal to V out one. Um, so Deer Creek gets the runoff from Jordanelle. Okay, now evaporation rates. Uh, this is going to be an outlet term, and it'll go into my mass balance uh, that I define later. And that's just the uh, constant uh, times the area. Okay, now some equations as well. Now these are going to be equations for my model. These can be differential or algebraic equations. This is going to be my uh, my volumetric uh, balance that came from my mass balance. 
Okay, so there is, um, I have the accumulation on the left equals my inlet term um, minus my all of my outlet terms. Okay, so I have uh, water flowing out through the river, evaporation, and then also use, uh, maybe pumped out of the reservoir. And then I also have my height correlation. Now I could have defined my height like like this. Um, you know, I, you can multiply uh, you know the area out, uh, put numbers on the left or right hand side of the equation. It doesn't matter. Um, even in um, this case, I could have put uh, V use. Um, let's see, I could have put V use here um, on the left hand side of the equation. Um, okay, now my my final equation, um, I put here uh, V out squared equals C. Uh, time, squared times h. Uh, so this was my initial condition. Okay, this just specifies my initial value, but this equation is going to specify all the values beyond the initial condition. And I put this in a little bit different form than I had initialized it here, because I, if the height goes negative, I don't want um, this equation to become infeasible. Um, and so so what I've done is I've just squared both sides of the equation. It's still valid, uh, but it avoids the situation where I take a square root of a negative number. Okay, so that is my model uh, for this for this reservoir. Um, now, as I mentioned, the intermediates um, they're calculated at each uh, function call and then substituted in. Um, so it's, it's as if I had written um, you know, this V out down here in this equation instead. Or if I had substituted in uh, this expression um, down in the V evap. Okay, so uh, those are just uh, intermediates. They uh, allow you to explicitly define some variables that then feed directly into the equations. So let me uh, do this in MATLAB and in Python as well. Um, let's just go ahead and start with MATLAB. I'm just going to clear my session um, and then uh, I'm going to go ahead and add a path to the APM folder. Now this you can down, download. Um, I've also included it in this um, in this archive that, that uh, I referred you to. Uh, for Python you're just going to import the APM library. Okay next you're going to go ahead and solve it. Um, we're going to solve reservoirs in uh, simulation mode 7, okay, and then also the same thing in Python. Okay, and then we're going to retrieve uh, the solution. I'll just uh, mark that as, as Z, and then I want to convert, uh, I had the time in, in years, and uh, what I want to do is just convert it to months for plotting purposes, and I'll do the same thing in Python. Okay, so there's, I'm, I'm going to create a uh, figure. Okay, and I'll do the same thing in Python. I just need to import the matplotlib pyplot library and then uh, create my first subplot and also in Python. So these are just going to be the heights in the two reservoirs. Next, I want to create a subplot um, of the Great Salt Lake and Utah Lake. Okay, and then um, I'm going to do a third one as well. And this one is just going to be the, uh, the, the volumetric flow rates. Okay, so the flow rates of uh, the runoff is the first one, and then the other ones are going to be uh, the river flow rates. Okay, so the Provo and the Jordan River. And uh, you can see that, you know, these were named uh, VN uh, bracket one, but just to uh, just to make these so they, they uh, are compatible with MATLAB, we had to strip out uh, some of the, the parentheses. In Python, we didn't have to do that. We can just cl include um, our brackets there. But all variables are converted to lowercase as well uh, when the model is run. Okay, so I think it is uh, ready. Um, just add a couple, uh, you know, um, here I'm just going to be able to show the plot. Let me go ahead and add Okay, a legend uh, to both of them. Okay, so to run this, I'm actually going to exit out of Notepad. Okay, and 
Let me show you just one other thing that we're going to need in here. This is, these are the times and also the runoff values. So if I go ahead and open this in Excel, I can see uh, the different times. Each one is a time step of 1 12th or 1 month of a year. And then you can see these are the runoff amounts. And then during the spring, I have higher uh, runoff amounts and then back to the standard uh, form. This is just a CSV file. If you open it up with a text editor, you can see that um, you know, it's just a text file. Okay, so now let me go ahead and just open this up in in MATLAB, and uh, and then I'll run it and uh, show you the solution for the simulation. So we want to we want to try to track the height change with time uh, with this uh, extra runoff during the spring, but also all of these use requirements. We were trying to manage maybe the level of the reservoir um, and the flow rates coming out of it. Okay, so um, let me go ahead and just click Run, or F5, to run it. And you can see um, here are the, uh, the reservoir heights, okay, that I predicted. And you can see, you know, the spring runoff for a period of three months. Um, and you can see the, uh, you know, the Jordanelle especially it decreases increases with the runoff and then uh, decreases. Here Deer Creek Reservoir is, is increasing throughout the year. Um, and you can see it just a slight decrease in uh, Utah Lake. Okay, Great Salt Lake is going to stay pretty much constant. Okay, so let's, um, let's now go to Python. Um, and if we open this up um, and then run it with F5 or um, the, the run button there in the menu, then it's going to bring up essentially the same uh, the same answer here that we got from from MATLAB. The other thing you see is that you produce these um, these solution files here. If you want to get the solution to each of these to plot, um, there's all of the variables in uh, CSV format. Okay, and that did that for Python and for uh, MATLAB. Okay, so that, uh, that concludes this uh, demonstration on how to build a simulation model. Uh, what we're going to do in the future is then, um, you know, can we actively manage uh, by adjusting uh, maybe the, the volumetric flow rate out um, uh, to account for things like we want to maintain our reservoir in a certain height uh, window. We may want to have a minimum uh, flow rate in the rivers. Um, you know, maybe there's a flood event, um, you know, excessive snowpack. Um, you know, how would you manage that? How would you uh, manage it with expecting uh, higher flow rates coming in the future? So this was just a simulation case, but um, in the future, what we're going to do is we're going to try to optimize um, the the values that we can change, which are the outlet flow rates. I'd be able to manage the levels and flow rates in these in these reservoirs.